Okay, today's very easy task is to um, chuck an SO3 TXCO um, unit, TCXO, geez, I always get that wrong, TCXO, uh, crystal oven unit, um, into a 480 Kenwood. And um, I thought it uh, would save you some of the hard work and waiting there, you know, for five minutes while I take screws out of something. And we'd just go to a bit of a snapshot by taking the uh, covers off um, and it's in the top cover area. You can actually get away with leaving the bottom cover off. I always pull them all off because I just want to check everything anyway. Now there's uh, three screws which are, let's just get a little bit of a look here. One, two and three hiding behind there. And these little fellas snap off, okay? <laughs> Not quite like that. Okay, so they will snap off and basically that whole board if I take the camera away, I can actually see what I'm doing here. Comes out, and on the um, rear side of it, you've got spots for filters, um, TCXO, and um, oh, filters. There's two filters. So I probably don't need to show you how I soldered this in. It's more just a matter of seeing that the um, SO3 TCXO unit sits on there beautifully. Um, there's some very easy, there's six solder spots that you need to be uh, doing. Uh, two of them are for the can, four of them for the actual TCXO unit. Um, and they're well spaced and you certainly can, uh, you'd be very, very hard, you know, unless you're using a, you know, 5,000 watt blowtorch or something. Um, I use a, um, a little pen uh, system, uh, care of Brendan Bryant. It's the... Um, Weller station there that uh, is a you know nice the, the nice pencil heat is great I've got to say um, you never realize that you needed one until you um, got one and then you suddenly realize how did you live without one okay so basically um, that board will go back in uh, there is some controversy over the um, um, the description in the book in regards to these two little spots right here and for filters versus crystal oven and the 480 recognises the um, um, crystal oven when it goes in there. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the next stage, but I'm going to put a few screws in and save you having to sit there watching my video go up, down, everywhere. And I'll uh, just pop that board back in. All right, now, when you go to put these um, connectors back in that Ken would have so brilliantly put together, and they're not bad, I've got to say, they're not too bad. Um, probably when you unclip them is probably more the the um, situation of just being a bit cautious uh, they'll seem like they're a little bit uh, tight when you try to um, take them out sorry I just had someone come through the door and <laughs> camera went everywhere there um, yeah they'll seem a little bit tight um, so just take it nice and easy as you you'll lift from the center and you'll get a little flat blade screwdriver and lift from that center spot there there's actually a gap that's very obvious on both sides and all of a sudden it'll just spring so um, if you feel like you're applying too much force to it like you're gonna break the plastic well something's very wrong in the way you're doing it because these do just spring out beautifully and when you put them back in the reason you want your three screws in one two and three is because when you go to push those down um, the board needs to have a nice firm seat as such and they just just sit in there just as easy as I've done there uh, you're not looking for any cracking or snap in sounds or anything they just press in there very nicely and same with this one here oh to make a lie of me that one sort of felt like a click okay so just checking that you've got both in there beautifully and you've got something sort of um, really happening all right we'll take you to the next phase now I've actually put a few of these in before and um, the booklet says to go to WWV 15, 10 megs, etc. And um, yes, what we're doing at the moment is showing and you'll hear the chime in a second. And it's, it's very rare that the SO3 crystal oven needs to actually be um, calibrated. Uh, look, I don't know why that is. It's just been our experience, probably fitted, I don't know. <laughs> 15 or 20 of them over the years and um, they just seem to go in beautifully and you don't end up having to um, <coughs> excuse me um, sit there playing with the oven at all um, but um, I'm just waiting for that to get onto the right 
beep. It will in a second. Isn't it amazing how long 60 seconds takes? But um, this is the TS480 SAT. Uh, this is the, here we go. Yeah, yeah, no, that's fine. Um, the faster way, often, um, I might just find an example, and <laughs> some people, the purists out there won't like what I'm about to say next, but it works just as easily, um, and that is using a known signal. Just hang on a second. Now, some people might find this crude, <laughs> but as uh, time goes on, you'll get a, a sense of knowing uh, listening to an FT8 signal and um, you know if this was 7076.01 uh, we'd be saying okay let's have a look and we go back check our WWV etc etc um, I'm so used to listening to FT8 signals that I can tell when it's spot on um, and I'll be honest we actually did have to touch this one just a tad just ever so slightly um, but um, We've actually gone through and checked it with um, 15 megs and 10 megs. Yeah, no, it's spot on. Um, first one, actually, we've ever had to um, just slightly move, but um, that's okay. But uh, the 480's a, a great radio, actually, um, and very easy to work on. Uh, not really much that goes wrong with them, which is great. You know, they're, um, they're a nice chassis, and um, always been a big fan of the, uh, the head unit on these, so just lovely. A lot of different ways you can mount the 480. There's um, obviously their... Um, let me just turn that down. Uh, there's their mounts that um, uh, are fairly traditional with the uh, dash mounts, etc. Um, there's uh, they have a uh, thing called an MB480, which uh, is a, um, a mounting kit to um, probably more you know desirable for portable use and things in, in those sort of areas. And um, uh, these are heavily used by um, uh, some of the uh, the Weissen boys and uh, uh, a lot of. Uh, them have uh, been using them in portable and found them to be well really well quite when I say quite a few a lot of them actually um, but I think the the reason is that they've also found um, the 480 just had not knocking 7000s or um, 857s uh, I mean I run a 7000 in my car it's it's handy it's great it does a great job does it do as good a job on the receiver as a 480 and handle noise as much? Not a chance. Um, that's just, you know, as honest as, as I can be. But, you know, with that, um, you know, there's nice little video features that the 7000 does, etc. as does the 857 has some nice little features. So, you know, um, the biggest feature being the head size, you know, that a lot of people don't have the room for the head size. But if you've got room, yeah, look, definitely the 480 is going to be a better radio um, in there. And... Um, you really can't hurt yourself by um, chucking in one of these uh, SO3s. Um, you know, whether you're running at mobile or base, uh, these things just make them rock solid. They really do, and um, you'll uh, you'll certainly enjoy it. All right. Well, I've just got to do a couple of little transmit tests and bits and pieces. I'll just uh, get set up for that, and we'll just see what this is doing. Might be a second. Okay, so we're back and we're actually using today one of the Yaesu, I'm not, not on one of my analyzers, how's that, eh? Um, Yaesu dummy load meter, 150 watts, um, and uh, great, great meters, these things. Oldie but a goodie, FM, uh, 110 watts. That's uh, what you'd expect to see um, out of um, one of these things. They're, um, they're, they're pretty, pretty reasonable. Um, and sideband, I'll have to bring the mic gain up a bit, yeah, yeah, I thought so. Um, on these they have a um, oh, let's have a look here yeah don't get caught out because they uh, when they default they default to 50% and you definitely want to bring a bit of oops sorry I was going to put my hand over that for a second I really managed this very well sorry try that keep an eye on it uh, you can run these things around 90% um, they they certainly run extremely well um, and let's have a little bit of a look Oh, look, oh, yeah. So, oh, oh, yeah. And so you're getting, sort of, you won't get a, a true PEP, obviously, like we do on FM, getting a carrier, which is over here. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, yeah, uh, one, two. And, um, yeah, the meter action on the, um, the ACEs are probably a little bit slower, to be honest, to, um, to get that happening as well. But, um, yeah, look, uh, very easy menu to run around. Uh, I know this is supposed to be about fitting a TXO, a TTXO, geez, every time I get that wrong. Um, but it's always remiss not to um, point out a little bit about um, the um, different features of these radios. They're, they're just beautiful. 
and um, and this one is just surprisingly um, really nice. Um, interesting feature, you can just enter, so you can sit there and go, right, okay, I want to go to um, uh, 7095, uh, enter, there we go. So we're on Ron's net, Mr. A-H-A-H, -H, and um, uh, yeah, very, very nice. Um, all right, we might just, um, I couldn't hear much with an antenna on apart from some FTA. There was no one talking at the moment, so that was a bit of a pity. Um, but anyway, probably wind this up, it's been long enough. Um, but yeah, just remember, easy job. Um, pull the three screws out uh, on the uh, on the board, solder the TX, uh, TCXO, geez, and basically um, six very easy solder joints. Remember to be careful with those plastic clips um, that uh, we, we see both uh, there and there. It's hard doing that when you've got a camera in front of you. I don't know. My luck, I would have dropped the screwdriver in there while it's turned on. Didn't happen, thank goodness. Um, yes, so very easy. And uh, um, now just remember if you're fielding, fitting filter boards as well, you know, you've obviously got a couple of um, things to cut just right there in front of us, uh, those two loops that are sitting there. But uh, yeah, all good. And um, this is going to be fitted into um, a mate of mine's vehicle. And I think he's going to be very impressed with this doesn't really matter if he's not to be honest i am <laughs> anyway no he'll love it it's uh, it's uh, it's one's just beautiful all right 73s and um sorry this went a little bit off track from the um so3 fitment but i thought well let's just show you what the um 480 sat can do um you should see the 480 hx that makes that meter go off the side uh <laughs> get a good 200 plus watts uh, we've had them sort of around 220 225 without even getting warm so they're they're amazing uh, just a little hint, you can bring the 480s up in power, um, but just remember you're limiting the antenna tuner's ability to do its job. So there's a lot of people talking about getting 175 watts out of a 480. They're on some sort of hallucinogenic drugs. Um, keep them around 100 to 110 watts, they'll last forever. 73's VK3 Charlie Mike. Cheers.